You guys all know it was coming. Dwayne Haskins has just been released by the Washington football team, and a lot of people did see this move happening. He has struggled both on and off the field at times, but a lot of people forget that at one point, Dwayne was seen as a franchise quarterback, set multiple records at Ohio State, and was a college football superstar for a year. So today we'll talk about what did happen to Dwayne Haskins, why he has struggled in the NFL, and how he became a big time player to begin with. We will talk about all of that and more. First, you gotta subscribe to the channel if you're new, like the video if you wanna help the channel do better, suggest what player I should cover next, and turn on post notifications as I will be uploading a ton these next couple of months and you won't wanna miss out on anything. And now let's get started and talk about what happened to Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne grew up in the Garden State of New Jersey, but would later move to Maryland where he became somewhat of a prodigy. The head coach of one of the high schools he was supposed to go to sat in his office late one night and heard people in the gym. He went outside to investigate and actually stumbled upon Dwayne and his father throwing the football. The coach said, quote, here's this kid and his father throwing balls. His dad had a whole list of accolades saying he was the number two ranked fourth grader in North America and the kid was just amazing, respectful, and talented. He was throwing a high school sized football and at that moment, Coach Nance had realized he had found something really special but sadly he would never get a chance to coach Dwayne as his family would move to Maryland where he would later attend a private school and blossom into a pretty big time player. One of his mentors growing up was NFL wide receiver Mohamed Sanu and his nephew Mohamed Jabi would go on to play for Rutgers and that was Dwayne's best friend. Dwayne quickly blossomed into one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football, and he was a top 100 kid by every platform. Rutgers in Maryland and Florida were the rumored landing spots, and he'd eventually commit to coach Randy Esdall and the Terrapins. He said that it was the school that fit him best out of all 41 scholarship offers he had, and he immediately began recruiting other players, as he tried to help one of his best friends, Trayvon Diggs, to come to Maryland as well, and he is the younger brother of Stephon Diggs, in case you didn't know. Sadly, when Randy was fired by Maryland, this reopened everything and changed where Dwayne was going to go. Trayvon Diggs went on to go to Alabama, and right before signing day, Dwayne found a new home as well. He wound up committing to the Buckeyes and had this to say. It's been a dream of mine to play for The Ohio State University. This prestigious university best represents my family's values, and playing under coach Urban Meyer and Tim Beck, and the rest of the coaching staff, best examples strong leadership abilities and people that I can have a relationship with after football was important. At the age of 8 years old, I went to numerous Ohio State football camps, I loved watching their games, and I idolized the university. Finally, my dream to attend Ohio State came true. It's a blessing to say I will be an Ohio State Buckeye. I hope that my story inspires all that took the time to read it. So yeah, Dwayne Haskins was now going to be an Ohio State Buckeye, and this was the kind of place many expected a prodigy like him to end up. According to 24-7 Sports, Dwayne was a 4-star recruit, number 7 pro-style quarterback, and the 91st best player in the class of 2016. With JT Barrett already at the helm, Dwayne was expected to be his eventual successor, but funny enough, a guy by the name of Joe Burrow was also on the roster. In 2016, he decided to redshirt before he had gone to play the backup role in 2017. The following year, he'd be thrusted into a quarterback battle for the 2018 season. It was against that Joe Burrow kid, and this is how Dwayne described it. Quote, I love Joe, but during that battle for almost two years, me and Joe couldn't stand each other. They are still good friends to this day, and Dwayne said he is super proud of what Joe has gone on to do. Now that the job was Dwayne's, he was ready to command the Buckeye offense. He had an extremely talented offense with J.K. Dobbins and receivers like Austin Mack, Terry McLaurin, Johnny Dixon, Chris Olave, and K.J. Hill, and he was going to have a big year. He threw for five touchdowns in their first game against Oregon State, and then four more in a win over Rutgers. He then had another great game in the prime time against number 15 TCU and threw five more touchdowns against Tulane the following week. He would then have his biggest test of the year as he would face off with number 9 Penn State in the wideout game. Due to some poor play calling by James Franklin and a three touchdown performance by Dwayne, the Buckeyes narrowly beat Penn State and then Dwayne would have an impressive six touchdown performance against Indiana. He threw for over 400 yards against Minnesota before he was tasked with playing against Purdue on the road. In a game that I was at, Haskins threw the ball 73 times, but the Buckeyes only managed to score 21 points, and Purdue pulled off one of the biggest upsets of the decade with a 49-21 victory over the Buckeyes. Maybe that game got in his head a little bit as his play fell off to a degree against Nebraska and Michigan State, but then he would go on the road against Maryland in a homecoming-like game, and the Buckeyes struggled. I remember Anthony McFarland tore up the Buckeye defense in that game, and Ohio State really only won the game because of a bad pass on Maryland's two-point conversion attempt to win the game. Either way, they won the game, and the next week the Michigan Revenge Tour would come to Columbus to try to take the Big Ten title out of Ohio State's hands, but Haskins embarrassed the Wolverines with a six-touchdown performance and a blowout victory. They went on to play Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship, where he threw for 499 yards and five touchdowns, and easily took care of the Wildcats. He finished his Ohio State career with three touchdowns against Washington in the Rose Bowl and had broken so many records along the way. 
In his one year as a starter, he claimed the single season passing and touchdown records for Ohio State and the Big Ten, and he eclipsed over 4,000 passing yards and threw for 50 touchdowns, making him just one of six NCAA quarterbacks to ever achieve that. He broke the Ohio State record for total offense, offensive yards in a game, passing yards in a game, and he was a first team All Big Ten selection, while also finishing third in the Heisman Trophy race. He was an absolute star, and he decided to leave for the NFL, and personally, I thought he was going to be a star and go to the Giants. He ended up getting selected with the 15th overall pick in the first round by the Redskins, and many thought he was a steal and a future franchise quarterback. He came in as the backup to Case Keenum, but in their week 4 matchup with the Giants, he came in and had a bad game as he only threw for 107 yards in 3 picks, including one of which was a pick 6, and they lost 24-3. He came in on Thursday Night Football a few weeks later, but struggled once again, and he would eventually get another chance. His first start came against the Bills, but he made his first career win as he threw for 156 yards and was somehow named the Rookie of the Week. He had two touchdowns in a pretty solid Week 16 game going, but then he had to be carted off the field with an ankle injury, and he was kind of just done for the year. Going into 2020, the Redskins changed him to the football team, and many thought Dwayne would change as well and blossom into that star they all thought he could be. He struggled the first two weeks, but really had a bad day in week three against the Browns as he threw three picks and lost a fumble. He rebounded with a career-high 314 yards against the Ravens, but then he was benched the following week because of his performance and his work ethic, and there was some tension between him and head coach Ron Rivera. He wouldn't play again until week 14 when Alex Smith got injured, and after three mediocre performances and getting benched this past weekend by the Panthers, he was released by the football team earlier this afternoon. Off-field issues also became apparent, as Haskins was apparently photographed attending a party without a mask. Due to that violating the NFL COVID-19 gathering protocols, he was fined $40,000 by the team and lost his status as a team captain. Ron Rivera had this to say, I told him that I believe it benefits both parties that we go our separate ways. We want to thank Dwayne for his contributions these last two seasons and wish him well moving forward. It's sad, so what exactly did happen to Dwayne Haskins? The simple answer is I believe he forgot what made him good and his mentality fell off. I watched a video about how he spent his first million dollars in the NFL, and he just seemed very enticed by the celebrity lifestyle and almost too confident in himself. When he was younger, he was praised for his humbleness and his leadership ability. Like all of us at times in our life, we hit a point where we struggle, and this most likely got to his head as he's always been a star player and for the first time, things weren't going his way, and it probably just became a downward spiral. Dwayne was a really special player in college, and I've always rooted for his success in the NFL. I hope he gets another chance, and we all need to remember that this guy is human, and a person as well, so try not to kick him while he's down. We should all be rooting for Dwayne to make a comeback, fix some of his potential lifestyle habits, and get back to the kind of player he used to be. I'm doing my best to put a positive spin on this, and we have no idea what went on behind closed doors, and at the end of the day, us fans all need to remember that. I hope the best for Dwayne moving, and I hope he gets another chance in the NFL. Let me know what you guys think. If you're an Ohio State or a Washington Redskins fan, let me know your thoughts. And if you're a fan of another team, let me know if you think Dwayne will get another chance. If you want to help the video and channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Suggest what player I should do a What Happened to video for next. And check out my video about what happened to JT Barrett. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.